terrestrial signs support the claims made by God as recorded in the Bible. In the slides that follow, various claims made by God himself or his spokespersons in a book written more than 2,000 years ago with contributions nearly 6,000 years old will be treated as predictions to test and compare to the latest understanding of the physical world and biological organisms it contains. The Strong Anthropic Principle, Isaiah 45, verse 18, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited, I am the Lord and there is no other. A testable prediction based on God's claim. Because the earth is uniquely created for life, it will be shown that many innumerable parameters and relationships necessary for life to be possible and sustained in the physical habitable environments will be discovered and that should those parameters be sufficiently changed that life forms will die and or become extinct and will not be replaced. Life is indeed fragile. 90% of the known species of flora and fauna is lost and more are being lost without replacement which falsifies evolutionism. Some have suggested that there are over 400 parameters necessary for life on planet Earth. I suggest that it will be discovered that the number of simultaneously fine-tuned parameters are much higher that make our planet uniquely habitable. The strong anthropic principle is essential to life and born out in the order and short duration of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. In context, with a point of focus from the human perspective, creation begins with multiple heavens and with planet earth, which is covered with water and without shape or life and in the darkness of the universe. Then light is created as a luminary which can travel in the vacuum of space and into the atmosphere that will be made for planet earth which will need to be able to allow light transmission for visual ability and to transmit energy to sustain life on planet earth. This light appears to be from a temporary unique source until the sun is made to light planet earth and to govern its orbit. The earth is spinning on its axis to create the first day that begins with a dark portion followed by a portion with light. Herbert Spencer, the famous agnostic British philosopher, staunch evolutionist, biologist, and sociologist, was a prominent classical liberal political theorist of his Victorian era, he said that there are basically five universal fundamentals of the physical world, time, force, action, space, and matter. However, he plagiarized the God he denies who made him and the world he lived in. God himself proclaimed this very fact about 6,000 years ago as documented in the first verse of the Bible as the very first words from the mind of God. Was this Spencer's pompous glory stealing or ignorant apathy of God's words? Genesis chapter 1 verses 6 to 8 Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so, and God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Next an atmosphere is created with a water canopy that may have been necessary for some time to contain the atmosphere from freely escaping into space. The earth will need to be shielded from the cosmic rays of the sun and stars before biological life can be made and live. This canopy of water may have provided extra protection from the cosmic rays which were more intense when the sun was initially larger and the earth's orbit was smaller. This canopy collapsed into rain during the global flood slash ice epoch. Note Venus has a canopy consisting of mostly carbon dioxide and hydrocarbons with some water vapor. The fluid atmosphere and water will need to be sustainable to provide biological life the temperate climate needed by absorbing and storing sufficient solar energy, exchanging energy and gases with the Earth's surface, respiration for biological life, circulation of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the water and atmosphere needed to sustain life, the water and the atmosphere needs to be a medium suitable for the rapid transmission of sound and light, for hearing and seeing function, and transparent for proper visual function of the creatures to come. The water and gaseous atmosphere composition needs to facilitate flight and the efficient movement of the creatures in the fluid and to carry seeds borne by it. Genesis chapter 1 verses 9 to 13, Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. 
And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Next the habitats of the ocean slash seas and the land are prepared, and the flora is made to fill those environments. The vegetation was made mature and able to take nourishment from the atmosphere and the essential minerals and moisture in the soil or water. The vegetation is designed to reproduce after its kind by the instruction slash command slash information that is coded into the DNA of all biological life so that a continual food supply is ready for the fauna that will come next. The light made on day one is not essential for the vegetation which can survive one day without the sun. However, the light made on day one is available to the biomass to commence the photosynthesis process. Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 to 19 Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Next, the sun, moon, and stars are put in their place with their orbits to create a 360-day year with 12 30-day months and a day with a portion of light and night as the earth begins to orbit the sun. The stars with the moon start to provide light for the night and to be signs in the sky for navigation and times. The moon and the earth provide the seasons to regulate the cyclical rhythm of the tides and the vegetation and life on earth. Note that before 701 BC, several cultures had a 360 day year and 360 degrees to the circle. The adjustment for the year that had grown to 365 days occurred after about 701 BC. Note that after the destruction of the earth by the global flood, God declares at Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Before the global flood, the earth had a temperate climate globally as the tropical and subtropical fossils of flora and fauna near the polar regions indicate. Genesis chapter 1 verses 20 to 23, Then God said, Let the waters abound with the abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. With the habitat for the sea creatures and land animals that can fly prepared, all the marine animals and land animals that can fly are created with the ability to reproduce after their kind and to fill their habitat. A sustainable food supply is now in place for them to live and multiply, while solar radiant energy to sustain life and the food supply is available without harming the biological life with harmful UV radiation. The symbiotic relationships can persist since they, can, since they are created together and for each other. Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 to 31. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth, each according to its kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food also to every beast of the earth to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life i have given every green herb for food and it was so then god saw everything that he made and indeed it was very good so the evening and the morning were the sixth day Lastly, God makes land-dwelling insects, animals, and his crowning glory is humans made in his image with unique abilities of speech, slash language, emotion, cognizance, creativity, and the responsibility to care for God's creation. Each of the creatures reproduces after their kind with variation or sorts within the kind. Symbiotic relationships flourish because they were created at the same time. Pollinators are made to ensure the biomass can provide a vegetarian food supply for all life, which without, all life would cease. The evolutionary pseudoscientists claim that dentation, the type of teeth, dictates diet and scorn that God originally made all land animals to live on a vegetarian diet. This is silly since it's the digestion system that extracts the essential nutrients from the food and not teeth or talons. Meet little tyke, the lioness that would not eat meat or a drop of blood, but grew to a healthy weight on a vegetarian diet. Another such lioness, Leah, raised in Italy, was an Italian pasta lover. Then there's Dante, the vegetable-loving cat. Consider the palm nut vulture with talons and a beak like an eagle, but is vegetarian and thrives on palm nuts. Speaking of the future kingdom of God to come ruled by Jesus, the returning Messiah, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6 to 9 speaks of this restoration. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the, with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, the cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox, the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the winged child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. God establishes the seven-day week with a day of rest, a heritage from God and not based on his planetary ordinance. God creates all that exists from what did not exist before creation and ended the work of creation and rested from his self-sustaining world. Using the tablet theory, God, God's eyewitness account of creation, which started with Genesis 1-1, ends with his sign-off verse, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4a. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Creation had to be within a short period of time to enable the self-sustaining cycles of life that are meshed with the lunar and planetary cycles that govern them. These life cycles are key to the biomass that supports the habitable environment of the earth and the symbiotic relationships of all life on it and in it. The failed Biosphere 2 experiment proves that unless the earth's ecosystem is maintained within important levels continually, biological life will end for the most fragile life forms within days and in weeks to months for the more hardy. Biosphere 2 shamefully failed its goal. It was constructed to be a self-sustaining replica of the Earth's ecosystem. From the very beginning, numerous problems plagued the experiment. A mysterious loss of oxygen due to a rise of carbon dioxide when microbes metabolized organic materials too quickly and dinitrous and monoxide, nitrous oxide, became dangerously high to risk brain damage. Water became contaminated and there was widespread extinction of most of the animal and insect species carefully selected for this ecosystem. Fruit production was affected by the loss of pollinators. The experiment was curtailed early despite the efforts from within and without the biosphere by human intelligence and intervention.